In this video, we will cover primitive types and operators. Specifically, the types that we will cover are strings, numbers, booleans, and undefined. And the operators that we will cover are number operators and boolean operators. We'll finish our lesson by learning about the type of function. You can do all of the lessons in this course in the index.js file that we created in our last lesson, but if you want to be more organized, I would recommend going to the GitHub repository, which is right here. You can go to the URL up here, and then copying the lesson outline from lesson2.js into a lesson2.js file of your own in your project folder. So I'm going to take this, I'm going to copy it, Control c or Command-C, I'm going to go here, I'm going to create a new file, I'm going to name it lesson one.js and then I'm going to go to my index.html file and then I'm just going to rename this lesson one.js save it and then I'll paste what I copied there here that way I can follow along in the lesson more easily so first strings to create a string in JavaScript simply surround any amount of text in quotes so let's type out console log this is a string right here so I'm going to type out console log this is a string and then I'm going to save it and then I'm going to open up my index.html file I have this made bigger here so you can see it better I'll refresh it you can see that it was logged to the console this is a string you can technically use either single or double quotes here so I can use double quotes here also I can do that and it'll display the same like that but it's pretty much an agreed upon standard to use single quotes for JavaScript and double quotes for HTML as you can see here we used double quotes right here and we use single quotes in JavaScript like that. If you want to include a single quote inside of a string that's surrounded by single quotes, you will need to escape it by putting a backspace immediately before it. So let's say I wanted to type Michael's string. I can type in Michael, but you see here there's a quotation mark inside of this. We can't do that. We need to escape it with a backslash. So I can say Michael's text or string right here, save it, refresh it here, and you can see that it typed out the apostrophe right here. So the backslash is used to escape characters, specifically a single quote for a string surrounded by single quotes or a double quote surrounded by double quotes like this. If I want a double quote here, I can do backslash quote, backslash quote right here. Or if you want to include a backslash itself, you can do a backslash backslash right here and you'll see that this will print out uh, the string with the double quotes and the backslash right there. Second, numbers. To create a number, simply type out a number which can be an integer or a decimal. So let's log out some numbers to the console. Let's try 3, that logs 3, and let's try 3.78, that logs 3.78. We can also do negative numbers, so negative 3.78. Third, booleans. A boolean can be either true or false. They will be used for conditional statements or if statements, which we will cover in the next lesson. So I can console log true right here, or I can log out false also. Fourth, undefined. Undefined, null, and NAN, or not a number, are similar in that they are all falsy values. We will explain what falsy means when we get to the Boolean operators. Undefined means that a value doesn't exist or hasn't been defined yet. Null means that a value has been explicitly declared to be nothing. An NAN, or not a number, happens when we try to do a number operation that doesn't produce a number. We'll see an example of this next. So let's first just try logging undefined. You'll see that it shows up as undefined there. You can try null. And that shows up as null right there. And we can also log not a number. Fifth, number operators. The number operators that are available to us in JavaScript are addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, and remainder, which is also called the modulo or modulus operator. So we can do things like 2 plus 3, which will produce 5 in the browser right there. We can do 6 minus 4. We can do 6 times 4. We can do 12 divided by negative 6. And for the remainder, we can do something like 12 modulo or remainder 8, which will give us 4, because the remainder of 12 divided by 8 is 4. And we can also make longer statements, such as 4 plus 3 times 2, which will give us 10. You'll see that. JavaScript follows the order of operations, so it did 3 times 2 first, and then it did plus 4, which gave us 10. You can also use the plus sign to join together strings, which is called string concatenation, which is a cool word. So I can do something like, hello, my name is plus Michael. So I can do something like, hello, my name is plus Michael. 
and that will log out as both of those things joined together. Let's put a space here so that there's a space there. Something interesting about JavaScript is that it doesn't strictly enforce things being the same type. So, for example, if I did something like two plus hello, it'll actually convert the two into a string and join it together. Like that, you can see a two hello there. However, if you do something like two minus hello, that's actually invalid and that's going to give you not a number, which we learned in our previous section. Sixth, Boolean operators. Let's first go through Boolean comparators and then we'll cover and and or. For the equals and does not equal comparators, there is a strict version and the unstrict version. The strict versions are the triple equals and the exclamation point followed by two equal signs. And the unstrict versions are the double equals and the exclamation point followed by the one equal sign. You should almost always use the strict version, except in maybe one possible situation, which I'll explain in a little bit. The strict version uses the exact versions of each side to say that two things are equal or not equal. So for example, two equals two is equal to true, but two equals the string two is going to be false, and then anything else is going to be a false also, so we can do two equals three is false, and two equals hello is also false. And now for the does not equal, we can do two does not equal two is equal to false, because two actually is equal to two, but if we did two does not equal the string two, that is equal to true, because the number does not equal the string, and then anything else, uh, two does not equal three is equal to true, and so on. And then two does not equal hello is also true. On the other hand, the unstrict version may allow two things of different types to be equal. For example, if we did two equals, oops, equals two, that's actually going to come out to be true because it's converting this string two into a number two because this is an unstrict comparator. And then similarly, uh, two equals two is going to be true also. And also if we did two does not equal the string two, that's going to actually be false because uh, this is saying that these two things are actually equal. This is pretty unpredictable and weird behavior, so you should pretty much never use the unstrict comparators. The one situation where you may want to use the unstrict version is for matching undefined and null, since oftentimes there isn't any real difference between them. So there are some situations where you may want undefined equals null to be true, or undefined does not equal null to be false but you should still be very careful about doing this. So with the double equal sign, undefined equals null will be true, but if you did a triple equals, it will be false. And likewise, if you did does not equal, it's going to be false here, but it's going to be true here because they actually are not equal to each other if you look at them strictly. Next, we have the less than, less than or equal to, greater than, and greater than or equal to signs. They work exactly as you would expect. So if I did six is less than four, that would be false. And then six is greater than four would be true. Six is greater than or equal to six would be true. But then six is greater than or equal to seven would be false. Next, let's talk about the AND and OR operators. The AND operator is two ampersands, and the OR operator is two vertical bars. The AND operator requires everything to be true or truthy, and the OR operator only requires one thing to be true or truthy. Truthy basically means that something exists. So true is a Boolean, and truthy would be any string that contains characters, like hello, and any number besides zero. False is a Boolean, and falsy would be an empty string, or the number zero, undefined, null, or not a number. We'll talk more about truthy and falsy statements in our next lesson, when we'll go through conditional or if statements. For now, you can see that true and true is equal to true, true and false is equal to false, and then true or false will be equal to true because one of these things is true. The Boolean operators that we've covered are usually used in conditional or if statements, which we will cover in the next lesson. And finally, seventh, let's talk about type of. Type of is a function and it works similar to console log in that you can call it with parentheses. So you would do something like type of that. And let's first do um, console log around it so that we can see what it's producing. Whatever we put in the parentheses, the type of function will return its type. So type of hello, we know that hello is a string, so that's going to return string right there. We can also type out, another way to type type of is you can do type of and then space hello. So you can just choose which one you like better. 
we're going to use the parentheses here just because we want to focus on the proper syntax for functions. So now if we put in a number there, it'll show number. If we put in undefined, it will be undefined. And same with, uh, well, actually, if we do null, it's actually going to be ob object, which is extremely weird and confusing. It's actually something that probably should be fixed in JavaScript, but it won't be fixed because too many people are used to it and it might break existing code. So nobody's going to touch it. Type of not a number is going to be number actually. So that's the end of this lesson. For now, you can either play around with the seven things we learned in this lesson, or you can move on to the next lesson.